When tech changes, the way we do things changes along with it. And it's especially true with smart home gear because it's often the bleeding edge of technology, right? So today I'm gonna to share with you a number of ways that tech and you are about to change. We'll start with the first one. I think this is really exciting for smart homes and actually for tracking too. Now two years ago, if you needed to know that someone was in a room of your home, you'd use a motion sensor. It only lets you know if someone's moving in an area. Today, we have presence sensors that use radar technology and they can tell that someone's in a room even if they're not moving. But tomorrow, Bluetooth is getting an improvement that will allow you to be accurately located up to 150 meters away from another Bluetooth device. Better yet, this could provide personalized automation because lots of the Bluetooth devices you carry today are personal to you. Now, the new specification is Bluetooth 6.0. It's being released as we speak and this new part of the tech is called channel sounding. The way it works is you have two Bluetooth devices within 150 meters of each other. They essentially sense each other by reflecting signals back and forth. Now the really interesting thing to me is the high accuracy of this and the fact that this eliminates some of the traditional problems that we have with location-based technology. Uh, this is a huge improvement and I can't wait to see it implemented in the world of smart homes as a personalized presence sensor. Even more interesting to me is the fact that Bluetooth no longer has to connect to a single device. And so this could actually be used for triangulation with high accuracy and the ability to get your actual physical location this is a serious improvement over these radar technologies. It'll also eliminate some of the interference problems that we find on these presence sensors. This is just getting rolled out, but definitely gonna change your smart tech and how you track people and your pets, and probably how you do home automation. But I have a few other examples for you, so let's give her. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and my goal on the channel is to save you time and money on your journey to live smarter. To do that though today, I'm gonna to keep you up to date on what's coming so you can properly plan for that future. The cutting edge of smart home tech always gets put into robot vacuums first. You know, they're a more expensive product and so companies can hide that cost a little more. If you have a robot vacuum, you probably have to prepare your home for it to clean. You might have to tidy up cables and other things or worry about dog poop and you might even have to buy a couple of these units because you'll have multiple floors in your home. But a lot of that can be eliminated today. The first example of this is the latest release from Roborock and Dreamy. Both release the first details of units that can lift or drop the device two inches. I imagine by next year, we're gonna have a unit that fully climbs stairs as these look to be successful already. The other thing that is so different today is how the latest release from Narwhal can handle anything you put on the floor or leave on the floor. Plus it can react to changing conditions within a couple of seconds. So with this, I don't have to think about where all the cables are in my home or the messes that I've left around. It'll deal with it. I want to thank our channel members. Now these folks are supporting our channel at a level that helps us to avoid going out and getting sponsors for every one of these videos. If you'd like to join these great people, we will be ever grateful and you'll be helping us pay the people we work with as well as getting yourself some additional benefits like early access to videos like this. The newest Wi-Fi standard is called Wi-Fi 7 and I didn't think it would have a real impact on smart tech or smart homes, but it's gonna. Every new Wi-Fi standard improves speeds and this one definitely does that but it also does something that I think is way more important. Now today, if you get a Wi-Fi based smart home product, it probably connects to 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. But if you also have five gigahertz Wi-Fi in your home and it has the same network name, 
the setup process can fail. And I, I just had this problem last week with these LifeX light strips. I recently installed Wi-Fi 7 in my home. And while this specific TP-Link system doesn't solve the issue, Wi-Fi 7 will be able to. Wi-Fi 7 has this feature called multi-link operation. So today, my smartphone and a couple of other things I have in my home connect to my MLO Wi-Fi signal. The MLO Wi-Fi signal in my home is actually kind of a combination of all the different Wi-Fi radio frequencies. So with Wi-Fi 7, that's 2.4, five and six gigahertz. Now what's really crazy is my phone is actually connecting to two of those frequencies at the same time. And this is going to eliminate a lot of the problem with these 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi connected devices because it's handling what radio frequency your device is connecting to. I'm using a TP-Link system to do this. Now they make it an option in their app to turn on that MLO network, but as soon as I did, I found out two really important things. It changed the speed that I was getting to be as fast as I can achieve in my home. So it's always pushing my speed up to the one gigabit per second that my internet service provider gives me. That's because it's using both of those radio frequencies and in turn giving me access to more of the overall speed of those TP-Link mesh nodes. And there are other benefits to Wi-Fi 7. The speed is impressive inside of my network, but you'll see more from us on that when we compare the latest three Wi-Fi technologies in a video that's coming up very soon here. The next two things I wanna tell you about will really affect smart homes. It'll start impacting us within the next couple of months. Now, today's smart home hubs all kind of create their own wireless networks. One of those wireless technologies is called Thread. And today, if you have a smart speaker or a smart home hub with Thread on it, they all create their own individual Thread networks or at least most of them do. And if you were to compare this to Wi-Fi, it'd be like having 10 different Wi-Fi networks in your home. They don't generally share information between each other and they don't generally share the devices you connect to them. And although the new Matter standard has been trying to solve this, it's not gone very well because of this problem. In the next couple of months, your thread-based hubs and smart speakers will get the 1.4 update. And when they get that, they will start to use a single shared thread network. And this will both strengthen your network and make your whole smart home more reliable. There's a little bit of nuance and work around this. You know, I'll give you an example of what this does. So this Matter over thread sensor, I installed it in my home using the Samsung SmartThings app. Matter is supposed to mean that I can just share this product over to another app and then I'll get control of it in both apps. When I did that, I brought it over to Apple Home, but it lost connection almost immediately to that app. Samsung SmartThings could still see it, but it never worked right in any other app. And this is because each of those apps were using their own thread network or they defaulted to a different one. And this was maybe not on that network. Before Thread 1.4, these companies didn't have a way to communicate between the different Thread networks. Some of the companies were collaborating and working together and so we got some of those devices shared across, but now it's a standardized way of sharing credentials and therefore it will help us combine networks in the long run. New devices should eventually ask you uh, which thread network to join and even hubs and smart speakers should have that as part of their setup process. Now I imagine some companies will just hide this decision and so that might be just fine in the long run but 
not everything is sorted out. Today, if you have you know four or five thread networks in your home, how those will get combined into one is likely to be a manual process for you. I imagine that will go something like getting the hub or speaker updated and then setting it up again. The other thread improvement is gonna be really interesting to talk about and really interesting to see how you guys respond. Now this has the potential to bring back cloud-based home automation. <laughs> and we've spent the last few years moving to mostly local automation and control. So first off, this does not change the fact that you'll be able to do your matter and thread based home automation all locally in your home if you want to. It's just adding a standardized way that thread border routers access the rest of the internet and in turn cloud services. It's being used to make sure that thread networks can speak to both IPv6 and IPv4 networks while we transition out of IPv4. Essentially, your thread devices can get an IPv6 routable internet address. And that means things can be sent to them and they can request things from the internet. This enables things like remote control, but we always think about remote control as somebody's got their app out and they are remotely controlling the device. But it's not that because this will enable internet or cloud-based services to directly control your devices. You could even be doing that setup in the cloud-based service potentially as long as you're giving them access. Now the really neat thing about this is you could potentially pick that cloud-based service and even pick multiple of them so that if one goes down, you have another taking over. Now it's hard for me to describe how this will help you and how soon it will help you because there is some work to be done by manufacturers and the app makers, but I'll give you this one little idea for how quickly and how impactful this could be. Now if this then that is a cloud-based service with access to weather, the time, your GPS location, if you give that to them, and many other cloud-based services. You can also produce really detailed automations that could take all of that into account and spit out a window shade percentage and or a lighting level for your home. The right companies thinking about this for their app could integrate that very quickly. And I think this will bring a couple of those web-based services that aggregate information back into the fold and help us build out these automation platforms. Now, the best companies though will still integrate a method where you have a fallback. So if that cloud service fails, you fall back on local automation decisions. We couldn't do this in the past. That was one of the problems with cloud-based automation but I think we're at a spot where companies can do this the right way today. Now, if you're here in the video, it's obvious you're into this kind of tech, but one of the best ways to understand what's coming is to see the latest devices that we've been able to get our hands on. So we showcase the best smart tech every month in the playlist that's up on screen now. So go check that out. Otherwise, thanks for watching today. And of course, live smart.